Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a very fun, chatty, casual video. I am going to be answering a bunch of your questions that you sent over, mostly on Instagram, and I also have some assumptions <laughs> that you guys assumed about me, and I gotta say, I'm personally offended. <laughs> Anyways, we'll talk all about it in today's video, um, and as I'm answering all these questions, I am gonna be getting ready, I'm gonna be doing my makeup, and I hope by the end of this video, maybe you've learned something new about me today, so. Let's get into it. By the way, I'm not really gonna talk so much about what I'm putting on my face, so I will list everything down below in case you wanna check it out. And I'll also put the name of the product on the screen so that you know what I'm using. So probably like 90% of the questions that you guys sent over have to do about my love life. Listen, I totally get it because I feel like I've been kind of keeping you guys on a bit of a cliffhanger, so to speak. Like I, I've mentioned that I have a boyfriend, but I really haven't said too much, I've been keeping it pretty private. So if this is news to you, yes, I do have a boyfriend. We have been together. This is gonna be surprising for most of you, but for actually over a year now. So you may be wondering why I'm keeping this relationship so private. I know a lot of people share their relationships on social media with like no, no hesitation, but I kind of just knew that whatever I would get into that I would wanna keep it a little bit more private until I kind of felt like the time was right. I just kind of felt like that was the right decision for me. Besides that, my boyfriend is also like a private person and I don't want to put him out there when he doesn't want to be put out there, obviously. So my boyfriend and I actually met at a bar. So the old fashioned way, we did not meet on a dating app and we kind of just really hit it off. And ever since the day that we met, we've kind of just spent every single day together. Um, and it's just been Amazing, I'm super super happy and everything is going wonderfully and one day you guys will meet him so to speak um, Just not now, but you will I promise the story and the way that we met is also kind of insane I did have a very interesting psychic experience, which I think I mentioned in a recent video So maybe one day I will do a whole video about it because it's just so wild and it's like my party Story. It's a story that I tell at parties to really like impress people because it's just kind of really cool So one day I will probably make a story time about this whole experience because it was just kind of wild Christina asks, how do you feel the last years have changed you? I think that's a really good question I definitely feel like over the last two years I have completely changed as a person. I feel like I've grown up so much over the last two years and have really become so much more of my own person. I've learned a lot of really crazy life lessons that have really, honestly, not to be dramatic, but have completely changed my life and shaped me very, very dramatically. 2018 and the beginning of 2019 was probably the hardest, the hardest year and a half that I had ever gone through. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I feel like I came out on the other end such a better person. I don't even recognize the person that I was before I had all of those experiences. I feel like it made me grow up so much. I feel like I've said this before, but I really do feel like you guys have noticed the shift and change in me over the last two years. I do get comments about it all the time and I really appreciate that you guys are able to kind of see that change. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with where I am right now. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. I'm just feel, I feel good. I feel like I'm on the path that I need to be on. Lawrence asks, what is the most Gemini thing about me? I am gonna give a positive and a negative characteristic. So for my positive characteristic, I do feel like I am actually very adaptable. I'm able to kind of shift and change depending on what's needed for me. That is a big Gemini trait and I feel like I do have that. Um, as for a negative Gemini trait, I feel like I've become so much more indecisive as I've gotten older, but about the most stupid things. Like I can make very strong decisions about really important things in my life, but when it comes to like what I wanna eat, I, I can't decide. I am so indecisive and it's so frustrating. And I even know this about myself, but yet it's so hard to change. Huya Official asks, how do you feel being a part of a community that is constantly defined as dramatic and mean? This is something that actually kind of makes me pretty upset because it's a, just a little bit frustrating that the whole community is defined by the actions of just a few people, which is just unfortunate because the beauty community and really every, every community on YouTube is so much bigger than like the top 1%. And there's so many amazing, talented, down to earth, humble, just great people in the beauty community that just don't get 
you know, the type of attention that uh, the, the, the drama normally gets. So people tend to focus on obviously the drama and like the more negative aspect of the community. I just think it's important not to clump everybody in the same category. And I think if you're somebody who's just kind of tired of like hearing about the drama, there are plenty of people on YouTube who are not all about the drama. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of jump to some of the assumptions that you guys sent me. So these are assumptions that you guys have about me and I will discuss them and let, let you know if you're even on the right track. I got a lot of people telling me that they think that I am a very uptight person, which hurt my feelings a little bit. I actually feel like I'm, I'm a pretty fun person to be around. However, I will say, I am definitely somebody who is very, very shy and who needs some like warming up until I crack open and I get a little bit more like fun and out there and like my true personality like really shines because when people first meet me, I would not be surprised if they thought I was just like a cold hearted bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely not bitchy, but I can be a little bit quiet because I'm just shy and I just don't know the people and it just takes a lot for me to just like warm up to, to a new group of people. So during that phase in like a new friendship, I may be a little bit uptight. However, as soon as you crack me open, I feel like I'm a good time. I feel like the time that I started getting my tattoos is really the time that I started kind of opening up a little bit more and becoming my my truest self and getting rid of that up more uptight shell you know like i really felt like i i was just kind of becoming becoming my own but no i'm not uptight okay not uptight at all i also got a lot of assumptions from people saying that i don't have a lot of friends which is true <laughs> so i'm not gonna take total offense to that and i actually don't think that's a bad thing at all um when i was in high school i definitely had a lot more friends than i have now but i think it's really normal that as you get older and as you grow up um people just kind of tend to fall off in your life. I probably have like, I don't know, seven good friends in my life. And that's a perfect number for me, man. It's all about quality over quantity. That's what I always say. Vanessa says, you feel less productive now that you are not in university. And Vanessa, were you listening to me? Because that's kind of weird. I was just talking to my aunt actually about this. And I definitely do. I feel so much less productive now in my life than I did when I was in university. Because when I was in university, my schedule was so intense and so busy. I had so many writing assignments and I definitely don't miss that. Because I had so much to get done, because I had so much to do, I really had no choice but to be productive and I had no choice but to schedule myself really strictly so that I could actually get everything done. Um, and I do miss that structure that university gave my life. Because I'm not in school anymore and because I completely work for myself, I do make my own schedule and that is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because obviously you do have that flexibility, but it's a curse because you need to be disciplined Disciplined. And sometimes I go through phases where it's really hard for me to discipline myself. And I think that's normal. It's a constant ebb and flow, constant up and down. Um, right now I am feeling more productive than I was over the last couple months because during self-isolation, I actually found it really, really difficult to be productive. Um, I found that I was just really lazy, to be honest with you, was a kind of normal way to react considering everything that was going on in the world. I mean, I just think it was a stressful time. It's normal for you to kind of just be off. Rachel says, you have not personally struggled with mental illness. That, my friend, is not true whatsoever. I have actually struggled with pretty severe anxiety and depression my entire life. My anxiety was at its most severe between the ages of three and 15. I would get such bad anxiety attacks that I would be throwing up. Um, I had night terrors for my anxiety, so I would like wake up screaming and just have like these horrible episodes. When I entered high school, I had an anxiety attack every single day after school ended and before school started. My anxiety and depression has manifested itself in so many different ways throughout my life, but um, I think where I am now at 26 years old, I mean, I, I, again, I'm like a completely different person. A lot of the people who knew me growing up, like a lot of my parents' friends, for example, like they don't even recognize who I am now because I was such like a scared, anxious little girl and they can't even imagine that I kind of 
grew out of that. My, my anxiety is so much better. It's so much more under control. Um, I definitely still have like episodes. I do have depressive episodes too, but they're way less frequent than they used to be. Never did I ever think I would be able to have this under control because this was such a huge part of kind of who I was for the majority of my life. So I'm actually very proud of, of how far I've come. So yeah, that's that's that. Amanda says, you keep most of your life private because you're worried others will judge you. I actually would disagree with that. I am not worried that others will judge me. I am not worried about being judged whatsoever. If I was worried about being judged, then I wouldn't be doing this. Like I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. It's really not something that I'm worried about. Like I'm very secure with who I am as a person. And if you know who you are and you're kind of secure in that and you're confident in yourself, then you can't be afraid of people judging you. You just can't because the people who judge you, they, they don't actually know you. But what does freak me out is people judging, you know, the people who I love. So whether that's close friends, family, or my boyfriend, I just don't like putting people on display and I feel like personally responsible for them. All right, almost done my makeup. I actually was going to do eye makeup today, but I'm kind of feeling no eye makeup and I'm just gonna put on a lip. So I'm gonna answer one more question. H. Sewell says, you take a lot of time with your tattoo design slash work a lot with the artist beforehand. So with my first tattoo that I got, the wolf, um, I wanted this since I was like 16. So this was definitely like a long time in the making and it was something that I knew I wanted for a very, very long time, but my snake tattoo and my um, leopard tattoo were two tattoos that I took very little time to think about. I did not really consider it for very long, which maybe was a bit of a mistake. I was just so kind of addicted to wanting to get more and more tattoos that I just didn't care. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. Like I remember when I got my snake tattoo, as soon as she started tattooing me, I was like, well, there's there's no going back now. And honestly, I do not regret it one bit. Um, I'm lucky that I don't regret it because I probably, like I said, should have taken a little bit more time to get my tattoos. But I think because all of my tattoos individually just like meant so much to me and really represented like such a, such a transformative part of my life, um, I feel like it's hard to regret. So, I, I love my tattoos so, so much, and I want more. Sorry, Dad. This is actually a great question. So Ali says, when you meet new people in social situations and they ask what you do, do you tell them that you're a beauty influencer? So it does depend, because sometimes I'll say that I like I'm a YouTuber and I'll explain what I do, but other times I just don't feel like explaining what I do, because when you say that you are an influencer, that you work on YouTube or whatever it is, people always have a lot of follow-up questions, which is totally fine, but sometimes I don't feel like talking. <laughs> so I just say that I work in marketing. And I'll give you an example. So if I'm in like a party situation and somebody's like, hey, what do you do? I have absolutely no problem telling them what I do because I'm very proud of what I do actually. But if I jump in an Uber and the Uber driver is like trying to make conversation with me, he's like, so what do you do? I just say I'm in marketing because the conversation ends there and I just don't want to continue talking. <laughs> or if I'm talking to like older people, like much older people, and um, there's like no reason for them to really know anything about like my career or my job, I just say I'm in marketing because again, it's just so much easier because explaining YouTube sometimes to an older person who doesn't quite grasp social media is very tricky. So it actually really does depend. And I think a lot of um, social media people could probably relate to that. All right guys, that is it. Um, sorry that this get ready with me makeup wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, but obviously this was just more so about the questions, kind of less about the makeup. However, I will say I'm really enjoying the base that I put on. It's looking fabulous, if I say so myself. I put on the Elia True Skin Serum Foundation and the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake Concealer. Very good, very good. I'd be happy to do more of these Every once in a while, if you want to see more, let me know down below and just say hi because I love I love hearing from you guys. Give us a big thumbs up also if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to join the fam and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!